Hey everybody, welcome back to Positive Vibes. It's awesome to have you here. For all the new faces in the crowd, hit that subscribe button and join the Positive Vibes family. We're all about spreading good vibes and helping you become the best version of yourself. Today, we're diving into something a little different, but super important likability. We all want to be liked, right? It makes life more fun, more enjoyable, and let's be honest, a whole lot easier. But sometimes, we might have hidden habits that are actually pushing people away without us even realizing it. So, buckle up, because we're about to uncover six hidden habits that might be making you less likable, and more importantly, how to turn those vibes around. You know what they say, a little self-awareness goes a long way. Let's do this. All right, first up, we're tackling the fine art of conversation. And trust me, it is an art. We've all been there, right? Someone's telling a story, and you just can't wait to jump in with your own hilarious anecdote. It's like an itch you just gotta scratch. But hold on a second, that right there, my friends, is the interrupt button, and we gotta learn to unlearn it. Constantly interrupting someone sends a message loud and clear. Hey, what I have to say is way more important than what you're saying. Not exactly the recipe for winning friends and influencing people, is it? Think about it. When someone listens to you intently, hangs on your every word, doesn't that make you feel valued? Important? Like you actually matter? That's the energy we want to put out there. So, next time you're itching to jump in, take a breath, channel your inner Jedi Master, and just listen. I mean really listen. Not just waiting for your turn to talk, but actually absorbing what the other person is saying. You might be surprised at what you learn. And who knows, you might even pick up some new material for your own stories. Okay, next up, let's talk body language. It's like a secret language we're all speaking, whether we realize it or not. You ever notice how some people just have this open, welcoming vibe? And then there are others who seem closed off, like they're surrounded by an invisible force field? That's body language in action, my friends. And it can make or break how people perceive you. Think about it. If you're talking to someone who's got their arms crossed, avoiding eye contact, practically blending into the wallpaper, are you really going to feel like they're interested in what you have to say? Probably not. Now, I'm not saying you have to be doing the wave and high-fiving everyone in sight, but a few simple tweaks can make a world of difference. Relax those shoulders, uncross those arms, and for goodness sake, make eye contact. It shows you're engaged, interested, and ready to connect. Remember, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, and you catch more friends with a smile than with a scowl. So next time you're out and about, do a quick body language check. You might be surprised at what you're communicating without even saying a word. All right, let's be honest. We all love a good story, especially when it stars yours truly. But here's the thing, folks. It can't always be about us. If every conversation somehow circles back to your latest adventure, your amazing accomplishments, or your cat's uncanny ability to predict the weather, people are going to start tuning out faster than a bad infomercial. Look, I get it. You're fascinating. You've got stories for days. But the key to being a good conversationalist is balance. It's like a tennis match. You got to keep the ball moving back and forth. Ask questions. Be genuinely interested in what other people have to say. And for the love of all that is good, let them finish their stories. Remember, Everyone has their own unique experiences and perspectives to share. And who knows, you might just learn something new or meet someone truly incredible. So, next time you feel that urge to steer the conversation back to your own personal highlight reel, take a beat and ask yourself, have I given others the chance to shine? You might be surprised at how much more rewarding a conversation can be when it's not all about you. Chapter 4. Ditch the Critic's Hat Now this next one is near and dear to my heart, because let's be real, nobody likes a negative Nancy. Or a Debbie Downer. Or a... well, you get the picture. 
Constantly pointing out flaws, mistakes, or generally raining on everyone's parade is a surefire way to send people running for the hills. It's like you're carrying around a negativity megaphone, broadcasting your disapproval far and wide. And let's be honest, nobody wants to be on the receiving end of that. Now, I'm not saying you have to be all sunshine and rainbows 24-7, that's just unrealistic. But there's a big difference between offering constructive criticism and just being plain old negative. Instead of focusing on what's wrong, try focusing on what's right. Celebrate the wins, big or small, offer words of encouragement, and spread those positive vibes like confetti. Trust me, a little positivity goes a long way, and it's a lot more fun to be around someone who lifts you up instead of dragging you down. Chapter 5. Personal Space. It's a thing. Alright, let's talk boundaries, baby. We all have them, we all need them, and when it comes to personal space, it's important to respect them. Look, I'm a hugger at heart, I love a good high five, but even I know there's a time and a place for physical contact. Nobody wants to be cornered at the water cooler by someone who's practically breathing down their neck, or worse, trapped in a never-ending handshake. It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, and it's a one-way ticket to the avoid-at-all-costs list. So, what's the magic number? Well, it varies depending on the person and the situation, but a good rule of thumb is to keep a comfortable arm's length distance. And if you're not sure, just ask. A simple, is it cool if I give you a hug or mind if I stand here? Goes a long way in showing respect for someone's personal space. Remember, it's all about reading those social cues and being mindful of how your actions affect others. Plus, nobody wants to be known as the person who's always in everyone's business, literally. Chapter 6. Gossip. Leave it on the playground. Alright, last but not least, let's talk about the ultimate vibe killer. Gossip. It's toxic, it's hurtful, and it's about as welcome as a skunk at a picnic. Look, we've all been tempted to indulge in a little juicy gossip now and then, it's human nature. But here's the thing. Spreading rumors and talking behind people's backs does nothing but create negativity and drama. It's like throwing a boomerang of bad vibes. It might feel good at first, but it always comes back to bite you. Plus, would you want someone talking about you the way you talk about others? Didn't think so. Instead of engaging in gossip, try focusing on the positive. Compliment someone, share a kind word, or simply resist the urge to engage in the negativity. Remember, words have power, and the words we choose to speak can either build people up or tear them down. So, let's choose to be the kind of people who spread kindness, not rumors. Because at the end of the day, wouldn't you rather be known for your good character than your gossip game? Let's spread those positive vibes. So, there you have it, folks. Six hidden habits that might be making you less likable and more importantly, how to turn those vibes around. Remember, building genuine connections and being the best version of ourselves is a journey, not a destination. So, let's support each other, lift each other up, and spread those positive vibes far and wide. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Positive Vibes for more awesome content. Until next time, stay positive, my friends.